Hey y'all, welcome, welcome back to a very exciting doll unboxing. And that's not to say that like, they aren't all exciting, but come on. You see what we're unboxing today. It is the Vampire Heart Draculaura from Monster High. So she's a little bit more exciting than normal because just look at this doll. I'm not even gonna say anything for a second. She's beautiful. <laughs> I am already so obsessed with her. I'm so excited to have her in hand and to be able to unbox her today. It's going to be a very fun time, but like we do have to talk about her a little bit first because I feel like it'd be weird for me to do a review of her without talking about the concept behind her and then also kind of the release. So she is, I believe, an Amazon exclusive within the US. I don't know if she is available or is going to be available in other countries. Hopefully she is, but you never know with Mattel, they like to do that sometimes. And she either retailed for $90 US or $100 US, depending on the time that you bought her. She first dropped like a month ago, maybe half a month ago. Time is hard for me to like keep track of sometimes. Immediately sold out. And she has been popping in and out of stock on Amazon since then. So as of time of filming, I'm not 100% sure if she's currently in stock or not, but she kind of goes in and out of stock. So at least it wasn't a drop sell out, never restock sort of situation. At least there's been a couple of opportunities for people to get her. And hopefully there will only be more opportunities for people to get her. But yeah, she was a little bit weird of a drop. She kind of appeared up on Amazon pretty spontaneously, pretty randomly. And that's why I wanted to talk about it instead of just diving straight into the review, because I do think it wasn't the worst release ever. Those are always Mattel Creations releases. Those are always the worst, but it also wasn't the smoothest release. So, I don't know. And then as for the price tag, it is pretty hefty. She is obviously a collector doll. We will be talking about whether the price is worth it, in my opinion, at the end, once I like am able to touch her and examine her more up close, because it's hard to tell, you know, just from in box, if I feel like she's worth it. But yes, this is the front of the box for her. If you see any like weird divots, it's because this doll has been shipping abysmally for people. Thankfully, Mine is like, okay, my actual shipper box that she came in was literally almost open. Like the sides of the box were barely hanging on by a thread of tape, which was terrifying. And the actual box itself was like dented in on the sides here. So I did pop it back out so that it would look a little bit nicer for the video. But if you see the dents, that's why it's because the box was damaged a little bit in transit. For me, that doesn't really matter because I am an out of box collector. I was going to unbox her anyway. So the only thing that mattered was that the doll wasn't damaged, which at least appears to be the case. So that's all I cared about. But again, I feel like I can't make this video without mentioning it because she is shipping really, really badly. For some reason, it's just not like an isolated incident where, oh, one person had bad luck. Like a lot of people are having really bad luck with how their vampire heart dolls are shipping which is not super, especially for an expensive collector doll. So again, I like have to mention that, but that doll herself is looking okay for me, which is what we care about. So that is the front of the box. It is really cool the way that like the plastic is done because it kind of looks like the bats that are printed on the inside are like floating in there. I will say that sometimes I'm someone who saves boxes because sometimes they are just so pretty that I kind of want to display a doll like, next to part of the box or like unbox her, but then kind of put her back in. I don't think I'm going to be doing that this time just because this is a really, really big box. And while it is extremely beautiful, like I think it is a lovely packaging design. It's not as good as the ones that I usually end up saving. So I, I think I'm just gonna end up not keeping the packaging for her. It's a tough decision because it is so pretty, but I this is like a big box, you know, like, it blocks up my whole head. <laughs> anyway, though, back of the box here has a little blurb in a few different languages that kind of talks about the concept of this doll very vaguely. Um, talks about it is basically the design of if Draculaura were the vampire queen rather than Elizabeth. Those of you who have watched the channel for a while will know that I haven't gotten to that point in like the Monster High Media. I don't fully know what's on with that, but I know that Elizabeth is supposed to be the vampire queen. And so this is like an imagining of if the roles were reversed, I guess, and if Draculaura was the vampire queen with the vampire heart gem. I do think it would have been cool if this was an Elizabeth release, especially since they do share the same sculpt. So it's not like Mattel would have had to create a new sculpt or anything for Elizabeth. They could have just made her like 
purple and black instead of pink and black. And we do get a lot of Dracula releases. So it is, you know, a little iffy to see that. Like, I think it would have been cool to get a list of that. I obviously still love her. Like I bought her. I'm not trying to start this video off by complaining. I just know that that's something that a lot of people felt that this would have been a really nice Elizabeth doll. And so yet again, I feel like I can't make the review without kind of mentioning that at least. It would have been really cool. You know, obviously we got Dracula instead. So that is what we're going to be looking at today. And then also on the back of the box, I know you already saw, but a few little shots of what the doll looks like so that if you want to keep her in box, you can get a pretty good view of her face close up and then also kind of what she looks like from the back which is nice, but we will not be doing that today. I'm so sorry for the long and rambly intro. I just feel like there was a lot going on with this doll that I wanted to at least address a little bit before I unbox her. Cause I think as soon as I unbox her, I'm just gonna be like piling on the positives. So I didn't want to like not address any of the like more negative things about her, if that makes sense. But now I am going to go ahead and go off camera really quick to unbox her. And then we will come back together to actually look at the doll herself. If you do find yourself enjoying the video, if you could give it a like, that's very helpful to me. And then if you're new here and you enjoy your time, definitely subscribe so you can see more. But without further ado, I have delayed long enough. And honestly, I'm very anxious to get into her. So give me just one moment. Okay, we have got her all unboxed. I had to like move my camera back a little bit further than I'm used to because her dress is so big that it like wasn't fitting very nicely in frame and I wanted you to be able to see the whole picture here. <laughs> so if you end up seeing more of my arms than normal as I'm like reaching in, sorry. But yes, this is Draculaura all taken out of her packaging. She did come with this really lovely um, certificate of authenticity. You can see it's like metallic embossing there on the front and then on the back it just says hey yeah this is real don't worry <laughs> it is uh like quite thick paper which i do appreciate because like if you're gonna give me a certificate of authenticity honestly i just like keep these in a little container for all the dolls that i have that have these but if you're gonna give me one i appreciate it being like high quality so that it's less likely to bend or rip or anything like that and then she is chilling out on her stand she does come with a stand which i mean i would expect collector dolls and especially expensive collector dolls to come with stands so i will lift her off really quick so that we can take a look at that it is a saddle stand here so it just kind of goes between the legs and then there is the plastic base as with i feel like pretty much all saddle stands you can't even hardly see it it is like a little bit wobbly just because you have to balance her in there i don't think it's like any worse or any better than a typical saddle stand so it works it does the job you know like it's totally fine and then we have draculaura herself I don't even know where to begin. <laughs> She's just so cute. So first the face, I guess we'll do that. Thankfully, mine looks quite nice. It's always a gamble when you order online, you know, that you're going to get like a wonky eye or especially like with the rooted eyelashes. I feel like sometimes Monster Eye has weirdly rooted eyelashes, but thankfully mine looks pretty solid here. She's got, it's hard to tell because of the eyelashes, but she does have black and pink eyeshadow and then a little bit of glitter on like her lower lid which is kind of fun i like it it's it's a little dramatic <laughs> because in the lighting to me it looks sometimes like she's like crying because you just see little hints at a time so i feel like it's weird to say that it's fun but honestly it's a really cool effect <laughs> and then i appreciate the black lip i just love a good dark lip on dolls especially for monster high it seems very appropriate so huge fan of that we are going to be getting into her hair first because like i think we're going to go top down is the easiest way to do this there's just so much on this doll this is going to be like a lot to talk about but yes so my least favorite thing about her is the bangs i just they look a little funky to me. I don't know. Like, there's nothing inherently wrong with them. I'm just not 100% sure that I love this style. I'm kind of wondering if I might want to, obviously, like, when they're not gelled to death, tuck them back and let her just have her forehead out. It's so hard to figure out how that would look <laughs> because it looks like this right now. But I just don't know if I really vibe with the way that they are presented in box. They are obviously extremely heavily gelled. Her whole head of hair is extremely gelled. Uh, she does have this really beautiful style though with the braids on both sides and that kind of comes down to the bottom here. And then the back of her hair, we will talk about this in a second, but the back is just like straight. It's 
sticky. Like it, it's so gelled that it's actually gross to the touch because it's not just stiff. It feels sticky, um, which I don't love. I do get it in the sense that this is a collector doll. And so a lot of people are going to be buying her to keep in the box. And so you want the hair to look as pristine in the box as possible. So I understand why it's not something where I'm like, this doll is garbage because of this. Just for me personally, I really hate this feeling in hair. So I I think I'm going to try to wash her hair, which is a scary thing to say about a very expensive doll, especially one who is like as elaborately designed as this. But I do think I'm going to try to at least wash the bottom. I'm definitely going to leave these braids in. Like I'm not going to mess with those because I won't get it to look like that again. There's no way. Um, so I'll probably just mess with this and then maybe mess with the bangs a little bit. But anyway, this is the important part. Her headpiece here. Wow. That's all I have. It's so, so good. So elegantly and intricately designed. I love the bat here holding the vampire heart. I just think he looks so cute. He's just vibing. I love the gradient in the wings. The detail in the sculpt is so intense. Obviously, the heart looks so nice. I love anything glittery and like a big fat gem in the hair is definitely quite glittery. Not literally, but like it's shiny and nice. <laughs> and then the fact that these little hearts here are separate pieces. This one's like a little stuck. I'll fix it later. But they are separate pieces and they do like dangle. It's just a lot of detail and I really, really appreciate that. I love to see that. I'm trying to see how this is because it's rubber banded into her hair, but it kind of looks like it's a comb. Yeah, you can kind of see the teeth of the comb in there. I don't want to take it out, which is going to make washing her hair even harder. But like, I don't want to risk that. <laughs> I would rather it be difficult to wash her hair or maybe like not be able to wash all of her hair than I would want to mess this up because it just looks so stinking cute um okay then this is where it gets to be difficult because she does have like a lot of little pieces here that i think we can separate so i guess we'll just look at the whole effect real quick i mean she's beautiful <laughs> what else is there to say i think she's so pretty i love that we got a ball gown I almost feel like it's a joke at this point where it's like, oh yeah, all the collector dolls from all the brands get mermaid dresses. So it is so nice to see a ball gown and it's also very in line with my personal taste. So this is like the full effect. I am gonna start taking pieces off though. <laughs> so this is the last time probably in this video that you'll see her uh, in her full glam outfit. I will post pictures on Instagram after I do her hair of how she looks. So if you're curious about that, that's linked in the description down below with all of my other links as well. Um, but yeah, let's go ahead and start taking a little look-see. So first underneath this hair, we have a black sort of shawl. I really like the way that it's done because it almost looks like a bow that she's put her arms through. You'll see what I mean when I take it off. I feel like it's in my head I see it, but I don't know if you guys can see it. But it has these beautiful long trailing pieces and they're so nice. I do really appreciate the way that they were packaged. They didn't get like super wrinkled because I have had dolls in the past that have even a similar material. And I don't feel like this material is particularly prone to wrinkling, but where the way it's packaged, if it's like folded up, it'll keep that line. So they packaged her really nicely to where this it just flows super well. And I mean... It just trails behind her in such a beautiful way. Oh my God, I'm being dramatic, but she's so cute. Oh, okay. But we have to take it off of her. So I think, I think this can fit over her hands. I don't think I need to take her hands off. I'm trying to kind of do this on camera for you guys. There we go. I'm just gonna gently lay you down. Spends a hundred dollars on a doll and just lays her around. <laughs> But, floofing it up for you, now you can see what I mean. So it functions as a shawl, but it looks like it's just a bow. And I think that's a really fun way to design this. I just, I think it's very, very well done. And it fits to me thematically with Draculaura's character. So I think this is a really, really beautiful piece. We are going to set him off screen here to the side really quick. Also, very quickly, uh, this piece of plastic was inside her skirt to kind of help it keep its shape. I do really like that it's clear plastic. Obviously, again, if you keep the doll in box, it's going to stay in there. You won't really notice it because of like the clear panels in the cage. But it also is something that even if you unbox her, if you want to use this to keep 
the shape of the skirt. Again, it's clear. It's going to blend right in with the clear paneling. So you're not going to really see it, which I super love that it's something that is not only useful for inbox collectors, but also something that out of box collectors can utilize as well. I haven't decided if I'm going to or not, just because for some reason, this sort of thing really bothers me within my own collection, but I appreciate that the option is there. So then we can see her kind of without her shawl going on. So you can more clearly see the white lace of her shirt. I don't know if this is a shirt and then like the legs also have that. So I don't know if it's a shirt and pants. We will get there because we're going all the way down to the last layer. Here. <laughs> but it's really, really beautiful lace all the way through. And then there's more lace on the cuffs and then also at her neck. So, so, so pretty. And then this like top dress portion was attached with string. You can still kind of see the string here. Um, I always say this, but I try not to watch other like long form content of dolls that I know that I'm going to be purchasing and reviewing so that I can give you my honest opinion. But sometimes it's hard to avoid everything. So I did see on Instagram people who have taken the cage skirt off and are like photographing her with just the little dress. So that's why I went ahead and cut mine off so that we could see what that looks like. However, if you want to keep it more secured, I didn't have any like string attaching it in the back here, but it did have string on the front. So if you buy her and you want to keep her more secure and more like intact, I guess you could say, you definitely don't have to cut that off. You could keep it sewn down there. Just like a note, I didn't want anyone to think that you have to have it cut off or anything like that. But yes, yeah, so this overdress piece has this beautiful flower in the middle. It's like, I think that's metal. <laughs> It's a little shinier than I would expect plastic to be. I think that's genuinely a little metal rose and it's so cute with the bow and then like obviously the actual dress. And then I feel like this skirt is the, the star of the show, right? Like this is so cool looking. I love the way that they've executed it. If you kind of look underneath, you can see that there's two layers of the vinyl. So there's a clear vinyl and then the black final on top and that's how you get this appearance so it's like almost a stained glass sort of effect and i actually love the way that the clear vinyl catches the light i feel like it's even more fun than just having the cutouts because like they probably could have found a way to manage to just have the cutouts and like have it retain sort of this shape but i think the clear vinyl really adds another layer to it that is just amazing we've got little like pearl beads sewn on and all of this fabric at the bottom I'm not good with fabric, so I don't know what they are, but this is like the same as her bow. And then there's like very faint printing on this fabric. It's lined with lace. It's so intricate and beautiful. And I'm, I'm getting so like hyped and so excited. It's just so nice. The back is slightly squished from being in the box, but it's not bad at all. She's just so pretty. There's so much detail. I will say, because I was a little worried because realistically this dress is quite short. <laughs> so my one concern with her was that you would look at her in display and be like able to just straight up see her crotch because I was afraid this would ride up. But there is some solid black vinyl up here that I think helps alleviate that. And then the dress does like just barely go down far enough to kind of not have that be a problem, especially if I don't have my hand in there like holding her up. Like it's a short dress, but it doesn't look like a wardrobe malfunction, which is super nice because I was kind of worried about that. And obviously if you keep this sewed down, it's gonna stay even better. Um, but that's super, super nice because that was my biggest concern going in and that's not a problem. So let's see if we can take this part off. There's just Velcro in the back here. Oh, it's very tight though. Oh, I don't wanna mess it up but I want to take it off for you guys. Okay, we got it over her hips, which is like the scariest part. <laughs> but it is like very, the Velcro was very small and there is like a piece in the middle to keep her legs where they need to be. I think I might need to take her shoes off for a second. Hold on. This has like layers that we've got to get to. <laughs> it's off now, it's fine. You can do it, just be careful if you do it. It's the gusset is like, a very thick fabric. Normally this is a super thin fabric. That's extremely thick. So I think that made it a little bit more difficult to get this off. 
but it's off now. As long as you're careful, it should be fine. And you can really see like the quality too when it's off. Like this is a heavy piece, not, oh my gosh, I can't lift it heavy. But for doll clothing, this is a heavy piece. Like this is very sturdy. Sturdy is probably a better word than heavy. It's very sturdy. It feels very well constructed. The only strings that I'm seeing are the ones from where I cut like the two pieces apart. And then there's like a little bit back here. But it is nice. Like this feels well made, which is something that's lovely to be able to say about a very expensive doll. But like it, it should be a given, you know, but it's just not always a given. So let me put her shoes back on. So you can see a little more clearly now how the dress is quite short. Like it's definitely a mini dress, but it does come down just enough. And you can also see, I mean, in the back, it's a little, it's a little shorter in the back. Maybe it just needs to be stretched out a smidge in there. But you get what I'm saying. Like it is technically appropriate. And if you wanted to, you could display her like this. And these two pieces are connected like the bodice and then this smaller skirt. So that is all one piece quite cute. She's nice. And then, okay, yeah. So I'm going to take the dress off now, but it looks like this is actually a bodysuit underneath. I thought it might be a shirt and like tights, but it's a full bodysuit. There's something so different about undressing a very expensive doll because it's just like, <laughs> I'm scared. <laughs> but you can see it is literally a full lace bodysuit which is super interesting there's like pinstriping down the front just the front okay not the back but down the front of the legs you can't super see it because of her skirt if you display her like the way that she came but it's a nice added detail and i do really appreciate like all of the lace i feel like they very easily could have made this two pieces to like save a little bit in the middle or like use a solid fabric in the middle because presumably lace is more expensive than a solid fabric if I were to take a guess. <laughs> but they didn't go that route. And I think that it is really, really cool. And then these shoes are so detailed, you guys. So the front is like bows and pointy toes, which is super cute. But I mean, it's monster high. The heel is where it's at, right? These are so beautiful. I feel like they're not showing up on camera as well as I want them to. But there's little bats here and then the heel is like a spiral staircase. They're just so good and it's so nice because again, you're not really going to see them with a dress like this. But I appreciate all of the detail that was put into these and it really does feel like Gen 1 Monster High at its core because they always had such amazing shoes. Like even when you couldn't always see them, the shoes were so detailed in G1. And so I think this is a really nice callback to those original dolls, not necessarily in design. Like I don't recall any shoes that were quite like this, but just in the idea that the shoes get so much detail, it's very sweet. I also forgot to mention that she does have two little like earrings on the sides with hearts and bat wings, which are super cute. But yeah, and I can show you better now how she sits in the stand. Oh, without the dress, she's kind of weighed down by her hair. Hold on. Yeah, I have it on right. Like, it's not backwards or anything. Put your hands out, girl. You got to try to got to try to balance. <laughs> okay. So with the dress on, she balances really well, actually. Like with the dress on, she sits in the stand fine. I don't even know. Let me see. Now I'm nosy. I'm going to put just the top layer back on because I think it's the hoop skirt, like the, or not the hoop skirt, but the cage skirt that is really doing it. That's like giving her that balance. Okay, let's try that again. Nope. Okay, what if I do put her on it backwards? Oh, she doesn't even sit backwards. I was wondering if maybe like having the longer piece in the front would help. But it turns out that this stand works well enough when she has her full outfit on. But the skirt, I mean, that gives you a good idea of just how sturdy and how heavy this is. This is what was helping her balance. Without this, the stand doesn't balance at all because she has such like heavy hair. I think that if she didn't have the hair and this headpiece, it would be fine. 
but because she is so top heavy now without the skirt she needs a little bit of help she's resting against the back wall but that's okay because like i'm gonna display her in the skirt <laughs> it's just kind of a funny thing to note but that is it for the vampire heart draculaura let's zoom in a little bit here so we can finish everything out she's really good <laughs> like she's really really good i am always one who is more than willing to critique Mattel and especially their price points because I do think that a lot of the time the collector dolls are cool but frankly not cool enough to justify the expense. This one I honestly genuinely do think is worth a hundred dollars and that's a big thing for me to say. That's not something that I say very often but when I compare this to like a Haunt Couture doll that is 75 plus shipping, the Haunt Couture doll honestly is like barely elevated from your average g1 doll in my opinion at least the two that i have i have both cleos so maybe the other ones are even better and i'm just like thinking about the wrong ones but in my experience those dolls are nicer like i will say that they seem nicer than gen one but only barely this doll is like on another level with how nice she is she has a nice face, at least mine. I'm hoping other people also get to have that experience. The hair piece is so intricate and beautiful and detailed. She's got a lot of layers and all of the layers have detail to them. They didn't skimp on any of the layers. Obviously, this skirt is like just <laughs> leagues above anything else. It's so nice. And even the details on the shoes... And then the packaging is pretty if, you know, if Amazon shipped it out well, it would be even better. <laughs> but assuming that you get a good one, the design is nice for inbox collectors. I just genuinely don't have anything that I can think to complain about. The worst part of this experience was the shipping by far, just because I was so nervous when I opened the box that like the actual doll would be damaged because of how open the box seemed. So if you are an inbox collector, I do feel like this purchase has more risk to it just because you don't know if Amazon is going to ship it nicely. But if you're an out-of-box collector, wow, <laughs> nothing bad to say about her. <laughs> so for once, I'm not going to complain about the price, <laughs> which like that's my whole thing is I always complain about the price because <laughs> I just feel like people charge so much for dolls and very rarely are they worth it. But our lovely vampire heart draculaura is the exception at least in my opinion i think she's well worth it i'm ecstatic to get to have her in my collection i'm gonna fix her hair up a little bit and she's gonna go straight on the shelf and i'm just going to love and cherish her um so that's my thoughts on this draculaura doll i obviously would love to hear what you guys are thinking about her if you bought her are you just as happy as i am did you have just as bad a shipping experience let me know because like that's a little weird but yeah, I would just love to talk about her with y'all in the comments down below. I do hope you were able to enjoy the video. Like I said before, I have my Instagram in my description, and then I also have my P.O. Box, Amazon Wishlist, and TikTok. So if you want to support me in other ways, you can definitely check those things out. But yeah, I hope you guys have a lovely rest of your day or your night or whatever it might be, and I will catch y'all in the next one. Bye, guys.